Greetings everyone. Welcome to Wiki Talks. Today I have with me Brigadier Retired Vakarsan. He's one of the de famous defense analysts within Pakistan and he has a general great understanding when it comes to international relations, political theories and a lot of other stuff that matters specifically uh, on Wiki Talks. Today uh, the topic we are going to discuss practicality of rise or and reincarnation of Nazism in the West as well as the implications of that form of Nazism towards the goal of India's BJP and RSS methodology that is to ensure that India turns out to be a Hindu Republic in Dufta model by 2024. So we're going to talk about it. We have heard so many things concerning what's happening with India specifically when it comes to minorities and their rights and how easily a specific community gets away with just about anything from lynching to murder to committing the worst human rights violations specifically not just in South Asia but as well as across the globe. They have set tones and examples of unique type of violence which we actually did see that happen in the 1930s in the form of uh, Hitler's youth, in the form of Nuremberg laws and in the form of the socio-economic boycott of the Jews by the German Nazi machine. So Mr. Wakar, firstly the main thing is that a lot of people are not aware of exactly what's happening inside India is quite literally the mirror image of what happened back in the 30s and early 40s uh, towards different multicultural ethnicities across Europe and the perpetrators of those same movements were the same people who were actually overlooked at. There was uh, a sign of hope in Europe specifically when it came to the rise of fascism was termed as the new order like this will this is going to change things change the happenings in that area but it turned out to be one of the worst world wars the planet has actually seen uh, now since we have observed that there is rise or and reincarnation of that same form of rules and regulations and same form of you know oppressive state behavior by the western countries specifically in the form of a new name called populism how do you interrelate that with what's happening inside India today? I think populism is a product of uh, one is the post-truth era because uh, mainly uh, everybody is uh, empowered mm. uh, in terms of information. There's information empowerment of the mass and this is a universal phenomenon. Now it depends on uh, how societies and cultures and nation states are looking at it and how it's evolving. So you've seen Trumpsters in the uh, United States, mm -hmm. then you have, uh, you know, uh, the Hungarian right wing. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have uh, the British right wing also, and they're very critical about uh, certain uh, aspects, especially uh, Islam and uh, Islamic culture. Uh, and in France, you've re uh, recently yes. witnessed, you know, uh, although it was more of a class gap and, uh, you know, disenfranchised people, because same uh, protests were done by the uh, you know Gillette Jones or the Yellow West for nine months or more than that. But when it was Algerians, you know, it became an issue and Islamophobia came up in the forefront. And we are also listening that maybe Marine Le Pen, you know, his front, uh, the, uh, the front national comes up. So there's a wave of uh, right wing and I would say Nazism uh, in the West. Now, how it, uh, I think, got popular in India, one is, of course, you look at the rise of RSS. Uh, since, uh, I think, uh, mind you, RSS was banned in India after Godse murdered uh, Gandhi, assassinated mm -hmm. him. And it was declared a terrorist, uh, you know, entity or party. So, the first terrorist party in India was the RSS. And later on, gradually, they were allowed, you know, some work in the philanthropy and uh, social work. Uh, and later on started, you know, uh, I think getting into mainstream politics. In early 80s, you saw they getting some votes. Later on, you know, their vote bank kept rising. But RSS uh, ideology was based on uh, Nazism. And uh, I think we can discuss it in further detail how it is similar to that. So India, uh, you know, uh, if you look at the demography, it's very, very interesting. Because India, it is said that probably the majority is, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically oppressing the minorities, mm -hmm. but it is other way around. If you look at the Mandal Commission report, which was published in, I think, late 70s, uh, it was uh, revealed that basically uh, the majority uh, is being suppressed by the minorities. If you look at the upper caste, the 
the uh, Brahman, the Kshatri and the Vaish, they form about 23 to 24%. Uh, despite that Shudra is part of the Varna, but definitely it's a lower caste within that, it's treated, you know, like inhuman. So, if you include Shudras in the disenfranchised class, uh, almost 250 million Muslims and then you have uh, uh, almost 220 million uh, Dalits, definitely considerable number of Christians and I think Shudras are like uh, 400 million. So, that actually forms 77 percent of India. Yeah, including the OBCs, uh, the backward yes, classes. exactly like Adivasi. We recently yeah. had, uh, you know, a very derogatory case of uh, an upper caste Brahmin belonging to BJP. Uh, unfortunately, and it's really bad to say that we're urinating. I won't, I won't say a, it was an unfortunate event. They actually have started to do this purposefully. Like, this is what they want to do. Like, dehumanize uh, a particular community uh, because there is no risk of the law of the land actually going against you. Exactly. Now, if, uh, so if you look at the trends, uh, initially it was uh, definitely against the Muslims. Uh, main thing is that a minority upper caste, which is like 23, 24 percent, is uh, suppressing the majority. And this has been a trend for the last 5,000. The only intervention was the Muslim rule, mm -hmm. you know, for about 800 years and the British rule. And as they got into, you know, government, uh, the upper caste have started doing. So, I think the Indian uh, populism or fascism has a slightly different color. One, it is very, very wild and hard. Uh, it is uh, almost inhuman. I am mm. sure the European Nazism uh, has same color, but definitely uh, there are checks and balances. Now, because of majoritarianism and, uh, you know, having basically a majority of Hindus, because then they put normally the Dalits, you know, and the Shudras with them to suppress the Muslims or the Christians. So, mm. it has a different color, but uh, if you look at RSS ideology, it's very much similar to… It's more like a copy right from uh, Hitler's book, uh, Mein Kampf. Like uh, they have the exact posturing, the exact stance, the exact marches, including when it comes to enforcing of the love jihad issue. You know, uh, just out of fairy tales and mythology, they come up with something against a particular minority group and put it up front. This has been happening. We have seen this already uh, back in the 30s when, you know, uh, there was social economic boycott of the Jews in the form of uh, the introduction of Nuremberg laws. Jewish women were not allowed to marry any, you know, German man in order to keep the bloodline pure. So, such things are now being observed within India as well. So, if in the modern age, specifically when now we have the technology of AI and information just flows and flows, yet when such things are happening, irrespective of what the global response is, yet if it quacks like a, like a duck, sings like a duck, screams like a duck, yet we are not acknowledging that it actually is a duck. I think good, uh, good thing that you mentioned is about Nuremberg Law. I would like to expand. Now, Nuremberg Laws uh, came up in 1930s and although Nazi party was raised by Ektar, but later on it was taken over by Hitler. And the laws which came up in uh, early uh, 30s, discriminating against Jewish and the Gypsy and certain other communities. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you look at the rise of leadership in India, it was Savarkar, Golwalkar and Hedger Ward, especially the, the main two, uh, Golwalkar and Savarkar, they also started writing the manifesto in 20s, I think. And uh, so I think they were picking up most probably from what was happening in Germany. Even the insignia is yeah, pretty much insignia. Similar. Now, if you look at the commonalities, number one, uh, it was against a particular community in, in, in India, uh -huh. it's basically Muslims. Uh, number two, they were trying to disenfranchise and attack their businesses like Germans were told that they will not shop from Jewish shops. So, in our case, uh, in, in India's case, the Muslim, mainly uh, at least the, let's say, the middle or lower middle class Muslim were into butcheries. Uh, so, that was attacked and in Uttar Pradesh, Yogi Tadana just uh, banned mm. the butcheries. So, their businesses were. And now, if you look at, there are open calls. Like in uh, Juna Khada, you know, in uh, Haridwar, Haridwar, there were open calls by, you know, uh, Yati Nursing Anand that you should not be, you should be boycotting the Muslim, number two. Three was then, uh, you know, social, that you basically ostracize, like uh, the Germans were discouraged to marry, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, the German I mean, it, women were basically yeah. discouraged to marry, uh, you know, Jewish men. Now here you have this love jihad. Betty Bachao, Gharwapsi and all that. They have made movies out of it as well. Exactly, exactly. 
so so i think uh, they are replicating those laws and uh, and and there is i think also an element of fear if you look at uh, i normally discuss that what rss has to do is demolish uh, three to four walls of perception mm -hmm. you know? number one there is 2000 years of slavery especially you know uh, i think if you look at modern times they were enslaved by you know anybody who came and they were you know basically minority nations Persians and Central Asians, mm -hmm. uh, Arabs, <laughs> later on uh, Mughals, uh, you know, and there were series of, you know, and then came the British. So there's an inferiority complex of addressing this 2000 years. Mm -hmm. So now they have to link the history to Guptas, you know, mm -hmm. and Ashokas because suddenly they don't want to talk of this 2000 years because it creates a lot of inferiority complex and mainly they have to link the modern time with Guptas and Ashoka's time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they want to basically... So and they're uh, interconnecting mythology with reality. Exactly. And incidentally, if they claim, like Moody claimed, you know, there was the plastic surgery and, uh, you know, uh, Lord Ganesha's I head was... told you know, that flying saucers and stuff, yeah. you know. So they, they claim that uh, there were spaceships. So if, uh, if they, the science was so advanced, the Vedic science, and their spaceships, why sword bearing and lance bearing smaller nation came and you know basically enslaved entire India? So one is that. Now comes the uh, other wall that is to be demolished the Muslim rule, mm -hmm. and uh, history has to be rewritten. Uh, the Muslim contribution has to be rewritten, and then they have to prop up you know certain heroes like mm -hmm. uh, you know Raji uh, Baji Rao Mastani and all that. They are now picking up you know certain people who resisted or uh, Prithviraj Chauhan and all that. So. So it's that 800 years of Muslim rule, again, it creates inferiority complex. And people say that in case you travel to India, every 10 miles there will be a Muslim monument, mm -hmm. some form. So uh, the attack on Babri Mosque, demolishing, then now they're looking at Gyanwapi Mosque to be demolished. And uh, they are talking They have also talk made a case concerning Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. Well. So they yeah. call it, I think it was Taj Teju Mahal. Teju Mahal or something. Mahal, or there yeah. was a mandir. So, so this is, I think, an absurd way of, but they are gradually doing it. Maybe they, are, they succeed. So this is another wall of perception. Then comes the British rule, which uh, of course did uh, bring you know some uh, modern, uh, let's say, uh, education mm -hmm. and development. But then there is a case against British that they looted also. But this is also to be demolished. And the fourth wall is the Nehru era or the Congress era, because if you look at how they are treating Nehru uh, and Gandhi family, it's basically how they, you know, Scum to pressure of China, or less they gave Kashmir to Pakistan. Mm -hmm. You know, so so I think these are the four walls of perception that BJP is trying to demolish, and I think now it's possible uh, through a Nazi ideology. And then you get your, you know, you get uh, an extended vote bank. They have tried it in the Hindi heartland, the Cow Belt. They've gone to the south. They have tried to attack Tipu and Karnataka, where they failed. And uh, I think even the money was burning. Fight between Hindu Maitis and uh, tribal Nagas and cookies is part of the same design. So, so I would say that yes, Nuremberg laws are being employed and even control of media like what Goebbels did, mm -hmm. mass mind control. I, uh, in one research I read that basically uh, the social media team of RS and BGB are, uh, if you look at the cards, the 10 million people mm -hmm. are on social media supporting Mr. Modi. Yeah, so another interesting point here is that uh, when you compare it back in the 40s and 30s and what's happening in the modern times, uh, you, they portrayed Hitler as a cult leader, specifically uh, Joseph Goebel uh, actually, uh, you know, enforced the idea that he's the savior. In fact, they actually equated him to a prophet as well, that he's going to save the German people. And then in Japan, the Emperor Hirohito was considered as the God Emperor and uh, Mussolini was considered as, you know, the modern day Caesar of that time. So, at, during those times, the information control was easy. The state can build perceptions, you know, work over the film industry and, you know, uh, disconnect the minorities from that aspect and propagate propaganda throughout what they ever want to do. But when it comes to today, uh, such things although being rampant we recently saw what happened to you know in a protest they actually started burning uh, you know um, uh, santa claus, santa claus uh, <laughs> uh, yeah exactly so in that domain we had actually previously seen in the form of hitler uh, uh, the alternate leadership was already ready in the form of martin bormann and himmler and such uh, uh, you know 
the, who considered themselves like uh, inhuman and you know completely multi-purpose superhuman machines yet the Martin Bowman actually you know he was so delusional that when Hitler committed suicide in the bunker he uh, actually went on and said that now I've been selected as the Chancellor of Germany and he celebrated that mm. while Himmler was suggesting that I should be the next you know Chancellor of Germany and I can revolutionize and initiate the new age of you know the Fourth Reich can this thing when an extremist dies and another one comes up they start thinking that we are going to do things better than him in that better thing in between those lines don't you think that things can get out of control that it's not that simple because we have like around just like you said that there are around 74 percent of these minorities and if they unite they can't do anything about it then. i think what india is uh, you're right if you look at uh, the uh, the disillusion and the bewilderment and the way party is going there are two sides of it you know uh, despite that uh, they have been able to galvanize the hindu vote bank and they have been able to suppress a lot because they are you know trying to target uh, minorities you know one by one but uh, looking in the longer run definite even Nasiruddin Shah said it mm -hmm. only for the Muslim community and he said it was 20 crores or 200 million that do you think 200 million Muslims are going to lie down and get it mm. and beaten no they are going to fight so you know a secular man like Nasiruddin Shah had to because he was also I think trolled and so uh, and definitely Muslim uh, community is one community which, which was part of aristocracy mm. uh, in the Mughal time and they had seen the rule and that's why probably the British also suppressed them then comes the Dalits mm. although we have you know very active Dalits yeah. uh, you know like Dalit voice uh, in fact their constitution doctor. was made and written by yeah Dalit. but then they used you know, Dr. Amrita yeah. was used uh, so but they are again you know if you look at uh, the book by Valmiki Uton he talks mm -hmm. about how, what is the ostracization and then there are now professors in, uh, <coughs> uh, in uh, United States so there is an awareness then comes you know the uh, Shudras because again Shudras also feel disenfranchised Sikh community is very active and if you look at Kharistan fandom you know there is a lot of movement even in Indian and East Punjab and then comes the Adivasis which are 7 percent which are the tribals mm -hmm. and we have seen the sample in Indian Northeast mm -hmm. you know. so they form a part of the no seven sisters uh, then if you even come to areas like Chhattisgarh, where the lights are very active, uh, then you have uh, even Madhya Pradesh and along the eastern seaboard, even Odisha mm -hmm. and I think right up to Mahar Maharashtra. So there is going to be, and I, I think in one of the uh, last discourses we did discuss about the relief zones of three states coming up, in the south, in the northwest and in the northeast, because these could be relief zones for those 77%. So there is already a thought. So maybe. Uh, why I feel that uh, RSS leadership uh, actually behaves like Marcos and you know 56 in chest of Moody but when it comes to really confronting you know a challenge like China I'll just give you example of what happened in Ladakh across the line of actual control there the, the political military leadership proved to be paper tigers actually mm -hmm. because this was the time you know if the RSS and people were calling like Congress was saying that bring those chaddi dharis you know because mm. they wear those shorts and danda pradar and go and fight uh, in Ladakh. So they just melted away in front of. Uh, so it means still the same psyche in case there is a powerful foe or enemy, you compromise. Against sticks and spears came in handy. Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. What happened mm -hmm. to Colonel, you know, uh, Babu uh, from Bihar Regiment is very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. so, so if you look at the response, uh, it was shameless. And uh, I also, you know, had some reports that Congress was pushing. The Chinese have uh, captured 1,400, and some people say it's more than 2,500 mm. square kilometers uh, in a difficult terrain of Ladakh. So you do something, and he said, "Do you want me to lose the entire Ladakh in Arunachal Pradesh?" <laughs> so, so this is, I think, where uh, I think even when you look at Asia Pivot and Quad, uh, you know, Australia, U.S., Japan, uh, and now some of the European countries. Are joining to make it quad mm -hmm. plus they feel that Indian leadership the weakest link within that mm -hmm. so although the projection within India is of you know I think yesterday he was saying that you don't know Modi you know and uh, in Ladakh he was saying na koi hamari seema mein ghus aya hai yeah na nobody was there hai, na koi. so just look at the lies that uh, he was renting as prime minister and influencing their military and I, I also feel that uh, the conduct of the military commanders were almost shameless you know yeah, yeah.
So, uh, final solution when it comes to the issue at hand, never Chamberlain's appeasement or Churchill's we shall never surrender. Yeah, there is slight difference because when you look at Europe and uh, uh, you're talking of Hitler and being appeased by Chamberlain, uh, definitely you I mean, he divided and gulped up a whole country. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, British could have, you know, taken up a stand the rest of Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, in South Asia, it is slightly different. I think the only country which can uh, stand up to India is Pakistan. I don't think so. Bangladesh, mm -hmm. Sri Lanka, Bhutan, either they have capacity nor I think uh, they have that, I would say, political will. And maybe India would like to, you know, befriend the periphery. So it's only Pakistan and then, of course, it's China. Uh, and in the larger region, then basically it is, uh, I would say, West Asia. So, yes, if you allow, uh, uh, let's say, India to do whatever they are doing inside, uh, this will be an appeasement. For, uh, and this message for the international community as well. Like U.S. is trying to befriend them, European Union, you know. They, they already have a serious refugee problems and the first doors are towards Pakistan. Actually, if things have turned out to be bad inside India for them, they are actually going to turn towards us first. That's right. But uh, but thing is that uh, uh, when it comes to, let's say, some aggressive posturing by India, so if Pakistan is the only bulwark in the region, uh, we, we don't have to behave like Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. It has to be a Chilean approach that you take the bull from the horns and you know, just push it back. And I, and I also project that in case, uh, let's say, there is a conflict or a war, a lot of communities are going to get up against their own government within India, especially yeah. the Sikhs, the Kashmiris in occupied Kashmir, the Muslims, but I'm sure they'll look at Pakistan yeah. as a liberator. Uh, but we've seen what was the behavior uh, against China. So it, uh, I think it's the international community which has to, because they do whining and dining every time Modi goes to the West, because still they would like to prop him up, you know, as the mm -hmm. Asia pivot and uh, a, a country which can, you know, take on China. But on ground, I think it's very, very different. So, uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned, it's going to be the Chilean approach in case uh, the chips are down. Yeah. So, we, are, we discussed the current dynamics happening inside India and how it's interconnected with the rise of Nazism, specifically in the West, and how the old guns, you know, the, in the form of new guns are back, specifically when it comes to Narendra Modi or the current uh, Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister who might become the next Prime Minister. As Mr. Wakar mentioned that in the time of uh, confrontation things might not look so balanced or approachable when it comes to India specifically at their own home front. What we are witnessing today in Nagaland is one of the key examples that this whole place is disconnected with so many people outside and yet uh, 30 days curfew has been uh, yeah, in Manipur. Been yeah, Man uh, Nagaland yeah, in Manipur, Manipur is the same. Yeah. Well, Manipur is part yeah. of the extended Nagaland. Yeah. So, uh, I would say it's a Naga territory. So, it's more than 30 months. Yes, it's been more than that. Mm -hmm. So, although tragic and very unfortunate how things are being uh, taken within India and how the hateful rhetoric continues. But like I said that the Churchill approach is the best approach. Thank you for watching us. We'll meet you next time.